I was secretly giving my hobby water from a dirty puddle and adding rotten scraps from the trash to his food. Mm. I did it all for his own good. <sighs> Honey, this water smells like gasoline. It's regular bottled water. Don't make stuff up, just drink it. Of course, I knew that there was nothing healthy about it. Quite the opposite. My husband could get sick. But that was my goal. It is no secret that the older a person is, the harder it is for diseases to be cured. Charles was much younger than me, only 25 years old. So it was the perfect age to develop antibodies. <gasps> I didn't want him to meet the same fate as my first husband. My plan worked perfectly. Two hours later, Charles turned green and rushed to the bathroom covering his mouth. But I was in no hurry to call a doctor, because in order to develop antibodies, the disease had to stay in his body. After a while, all I heard coming from the bathroom was silence. I was afraid that I had gone too far and rushed to my husband. However, the lock was jammed. Out of fear, I almost broke the door down. I loved him more than anything in the world. But when I finally got inside, I found him relaxing in the bathtub while reading magazines. Honey, don't worry. I took some of your pills from the cabinet and decided to relax a little. Charles found an absorbent and quickly got rid of the poisoning. That self-treatment oh. wasn't a part of my plan. So I immediately went outside to look for a new portion of leftovers. Unfortunately, the trash cans had already been emptied. Plus, all the food in the fridge was fresh. The chill coming from the freezer gave me another idea. We lived in the south, so it was constantly warm. Charles bragged that he had never had a cold before. And that only meant one thing. He had no antibodies against it. He had to catch a cold as soon as possible under my supervision. That evening, I cooked a romantic dinner for my husband. He enjoyed the gourmet meals and the view, without even realizing that he had taken a huge dose of sleeping pills. Honey, I feel drowsy. <sighs> As my husband fell asleep, I undressed him and turned the room's air conditioner on at the lowest temperature. I'm sorry, dear, but this is all for your sake. The next morning, my husband had a fever and a severe cough. I realized that I needed a doctor that time. So we immediately went to the hospital to get him all fixed up. 
I was happy with the fact that Charles would get the right antibodies. And that he wouldn't have the same fate as my previous husband. However, my hope was shot down. The throat looks good. No wheezing. The temperature is dropping. It's just some overcooling. You can go home. I was mad. In the end, instead of getting hospitalized, he just got a cough syrup. Charles didn't understand why I was upset. But like a sign from above, I noticed an isolation room in the front of me, full of patients with chickenpox. At that moment, something inside me clicked. My ex, Mike, was 40 at the time, and he wasn't able to cope with that childhood illness. It was my duty as a loving wife to save Charles from getting the same disease in the future. So I quietly opened the door to the isolation room and pushed him in. Lisa, what are you doing? You don't understand. It's a chance in a million. Go! I was almost succeeded, but suddenly someone pulled me. Where are you going? Only medical staff is allowed in there. Charles demanded to leave the hospital. But I refused and asked him to help me steal the nurse's scrubs. I've had enough of your weirdness. I'm going home. At that moment, I should have stopped and walked out with him. But instead, I found someone else's scrubs and, pretending to be a nurse, entered the isolation room. I took turns playing with the sick children and even kissed one of the boys in order to get infected with chicken pox before going home to my husband. When I got there, Charles was pouting and wanted to have a serious talk. You have to understand something. I'm not your ex-husband. I have a strong immune system. I won't die and leave you all alone. I wanted to believe him, hmm. but better safe than sorry. So I seduced my husband <gasps> and we spent a hot night together. Unfortunately, Charles was still healthy the next day, unlike me. Chickenpox quickly took over my body, and I couldn't even get out of bed. I was afraid that I would end up like my ex-husband, and I was so weak that I couldn't even call for Charles. Later, I woke up in the hospital. The doctor said, that everything was fine and I was going to make a full recovery. I wasn't concerned about that. Charles wasn't in the room. I was worried that he had gotten sick and I wouldn't be able to take care of him. If he was unable to cope with chickenpox, my heart couldn't take it. Don't worry, your husband is in quarantine. He doesn't have symptoms, but he can be contagious. The doctor also insisted that I should talk to a psychologist about my obsession with getting my husband sick. Charles admitted that it was hard for him to live like that and asked me to help you deal with this issue. I followed the doctor's advice because I realized that it's not one's immune system that makes them healthy, but the care and attention of their soulmate. 
I gave my dad some sleeping pills and scattered beer cans all over the floor right before my mom came home from a business trip. Is that how you welcome me, Jessica? Get out of the room. She woke up my dad and harshly scolded him. My dad struggled with alcoholism for years, and after my mom threatened him with a divorce, he promised to quit. Goodbye, loser! I didn't feel sorry for him. He was a burden to our family. When my parents left, I was finally able to host a party at home. I invited cool guys from school, with handsome Brad being my special guest. He liked me and suggested we'd go somewhere private. Brad was kissing me in the bedroom and clearly wasn't going to stop. So I told I couldn't do it right away. We weren't even dating. I won't find out if we're right for each other until you agree. My crush decided to go dance with other girls. And I didn't know what to do. When my mom came back, I tried talking to her about it. But she had no time for me as she was cleaning the house, while trying to solve some work issues at the same time. I got used to going shopping with her once a week, but that was over. I didn't even have anything to wear for my birthday. There is a pile of dirty clothes in the bathroom. Go wash them. Aside from laundry, my mom left me a big to-do list and went out without even wishing me a happy birthday. She had never missed anyone's birthday before, since a list of the birthdays that month was hanging in the kitchen. My dad made it. I spent my birthday like some kind of maid, moving the lawn, dusting, doing the laundry. It was not how I imagined it would be. I grabbed my smartphone and asked Brett to come over and wish me a happy birthday. Surprisingly, he agreed. I wondered what gift would he have for me. However, as soon as I opened the door, he took his shirt off and dragged me to the couch. I firmly said that I wasn't ready yet, but that didn't stop him. Don't make a scene. Haven't you dreamed of getting this gift? Suddenly, Brad yelped and let me go. I opened my eyes and saw my dad. He was holding Brad by one of his ears and threw him out of the door. Get out of here! As it turned out, my dad came by to wish me a happy birthday. He even baked a cake and pulled out a gift card from his wallet. I've earned some money. Go to the mall and get yourself something cool. I was shocked. He remained kind even though he knew I set him up. He told me he managed to get a job after realizing he wasn't proud of being a stay-at-home dad. Of course, you don't remember, but I used to work on Wall Street. Dad told me that at the end of each working day, he would go to a bar. One day, my mom got sick and tired of it. That's when he realized he could end up losing us and quit, while mom decided to pursue a career. 
I became a stay-at-home dad, so that he could have clean clothes and fresh breakfasts. My dad said that I could count on him if I ever had problems with Brad. Then he got up and left. I was still in shock, so I didn't notice it right away. When I ran out into the yard, I saw him with my mother. She was smelling him, thinking he was drunk. Hmm, sober. It's not like you. I worked up the courage and confessed everything to my mother that dad didn't drink and how I was the one who set him up. What? Then you're not getting your gift. But dad came up with a better idea. He said that we needed to forgive each other's mistakes. It's my fault too. I didn't realize that you had grown up. And I worked too hard and forgot about your birthday. That evening, I realized how much I needed my parents and wished for them to stay together forever. The person you consider to be an anchor may be the sail that keeps you going.